Welcome back everyone to George James and Associates Research Tools channel. If you haven't had a chance already, please like this video and subscribe to the channel. It really helps me out a lot and I'm on a trek to hit 1000 subscribers and as of this morning I'm about 682. So it really does help me a lot. Thank you so much. All right, in this video I want to look at how to compare journals within your field. And today I'm going to be looking at finance and economics because um, those are two of the more popular AACSB fields, which is a separate accreditation that business schools will have across uh, the world, not just the United States. And so anyway, it can be really difficult to try to rank journals and figure out where you want to publish your work. Now, there are two main ways inside of AACSB journals like finance and like economics uh, to do this. And I'm sure it's the same way with your discipline if you're not in economics or finance. And so in economics and finance and a couple of other disciplines, you have what's called the Australian Business Dean's Council or ABDC journal quality list. And you can just Google that and it is free to access and to download. If you want, you can download a spreadsheet of the ABDC quality list, or you can also type in a journal here uh, into the, the search filter, such as quarterly review of economics and finance. Now, ABDC has specific rankings. The lowest is unranked, and you usually want to steer clear of those journals. And then from lowest to highest in ascending order is after unranked journals, we have C as in cat, and then B as in boy, A as in apple, and then A star is the highest. And usually it's the top per certain percentage of 1% that's an A star. It's not even the top 1%. I think it's a fraction of 1%. And then uh, there's a there's a breakdown. And I forget how much it is, but I think it's it's like the top 5 to 10% are A. And then um, after that, the next, I want to say 25% or so are B journals. And then everything else is either C journals, which is like 50, 60%. And then the rest are unranked. But what happens if your desired journal does not appear on ABDC, which happens a lot? Well, if it doesn't, then you can go into your school's library databases and hopefully they will have Cabell's. I'm going to flip over to that right now. And so they'll have the Cabell's Journal Lytics Academic Platform. At my school, where I profess, a journal that we're going to publish in doesn't give us any credit for our publication unless it appears either on ABDC, Cabell's, or if it doesn't appear on either one, we have to petition our publication committee in order for it to be accepted by the institution. Now, what if it's not accepted by the institution? Well, then you don't get credit for it. You do, it'll be published still out in the world, but your institution will not give you credit. So if, if there's any Anything that, that relies on publication, and usually that is tenure track promotion, uh, obtaining tenure, you will not be able to do that unless at my institution, uh, for instance, unless you publish in Cabell's or ABDC journals. Now, in Cabell's, it's really difficult to try to figure out, okay, is this journal, is journal A better than journal B, or is it worse, or are they roughly the same? And so I'm going to use quarterly review of economics and finance because we're going to use that as a comparison here in a moment. Cabell's recently overhauled their entire dashboard and system. And so here you can see that there's a couple of different things. The first one is smart citations. And you can see here that uh, what they do is they take supporting, they come up with a, with a site score. This is for academic citations, right? Other art, academic journal articles, peer reviewed journal articles that are citing each article inside of this journal. And so the number, the smart citation score, the site index score is always gonna fall between zero and one. The higher, the better. And so what they do is they take supporting citations and they divide that by supporting plus disputing citations. So in this case, it's 1479 divided by 1479 plus 164. And that, that's how you arrive at 0 0.900. Now, what about further reach, people who aren't academics? Well, there is media mentions here, and it's produced by Altmetrics. 
And so um, this is simply the number, the average number of medium mentions that each article in that journal um, attracts. And so the higher score, the better. Now, how do we weight these two? I came up with a total composite score for Cabell's because they used to have a Cabell's classification index that you could then use to compare journals within the same discipline. But here they seem to have gotten rid of that for whatever reason. So I came up with my own total composite score, <clears throat> excuse me. And so the way that we calculate that is we simply take the smart citations or the sites index score and multiply that by the altmetric score, right? The average media mentions per article. And so that's what we're, what we're doing is multiplying this number times this number. Okay, and so what we wanna do now is I'm going to type this in and I'll show you, uh, I'm gonna show you how I do this in the Excel sheet after I actually do it, so after I, after I do these. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna look at the quarterly review of economics and finance. I'm just typing this into a spreadsheet right now. But you'll be able to see it in, in and so the, the number of smart citations or site index score is, uh, and we can do the math here, but I'm just gonna type it in for now, 0 0.9000, or 00, and then the media mentions, right, which is 62. And so the total composite, we are simply taking the citations times the media mentions, that's all we're doing. And we arrive at a total composite score of 55.8. Now let's look at the flagship journal in finance, which is the Journal of Finance. And I'm gonna move over here to Cabell's. And in the Journal of Finance here, we have the site score of 0.892 and the alt metric or the attention score of 199. So type in Journal of Finance and the site score is 0 0.892, which is less surprisingly than the Quarterly Review of Economics and Finance but its average number of media mentions per article is much higher, and that's gonna bring up the product score, the total composite score. So once again, we're going to simply calculate uh, the product of citations and media mentions, so 0 0.892 times 199 equals 177.508. Let me show you this really quick, and then what we're gonna do is we're going to go and we're going to compare it to the ABDC ranking. So this is my total composite score from Cabell's. And here I can even put Cabell's in parentheses. And then over here in column E, I put the ABDC rank. I will be putting that momentarily. So once again, quarterly review of economics and finance, the site score of 0.9, media mention 62. You multiply those together, as you can see here, B2 times C2 is 55.8. I'm going to bolt these. And then we look at the flagship journal of finance, multiply 0 0.892 times 199 equals 177.51. Simply, oh, other way, sorry, there we go. We wanna to round to the nearest hundredth. If we wanna round even further, we can just do, all right. 55.8 time, or compared to 177.5. And you can see here that that means that if we use the total composite um, from the scores we get alpha of Cabell's, then it looks like the Journal of Finance has a total impact of about a little over three times, right? You can, we can even take this and divide it by that. Yeah, 3.18 times more impact, right? So maybe we say the impact difference or impact differential, 3.18 times. So the Journal of Finance is about 3.18 times as impactful. Publishing in the Journal of Finance is about 3.18 times more impactful than publishing in the Quarterly Review of Economics and Finance. Now, if we go to ABDC rank for the respective journals, so the Quarterly Review of Economics and Finance, it has a B rating, right? So when, that's about the middle. Because again, remember the lowest is unranked and then above that is C, then above that is B, above that is A, and then above that is A star. So I'm gonna put an A rank under the Quarterly Review of Economics and Finance. And then when we come over to the Journal of Finance right here, it has an A star, which is the highest. Not surprising because it is the flagship journal 
of finance. And so when we look, sorry, I, that should be a B, okay. ABDC is B, and once again, we have our overall ranks, right? So we have A star, A, B, C, and then unranked. And so quarterly review falls there, and the journal of finance falls there. And so you can see, right, that it's counting B, it's about one, two, three ranks up, right? And, or you can even look at it this way, where this is the journal of finance is the top rank at A star. And then this is a quarterly, quarterly review of finance is the third rank, right? Or three point, you know, it's close to 3.18. I don't think it's always gonna come out this way, but I was surprised that it was this accurate. And again, you might be saying, well, this is kind of apples to oranges, but because we don't know exactly how many times, right? What's, the, what's gonna be the multiple when we go from unranked to C to B to A to A star? It's not always gonna work out this pretty. However, I do think that this um, this is a testament the the total composite score and the the consequent impact difference is a testament to the relative differences, the relative impact strengths between two journals that you were trying to compare when figuring out where you should publish your work. And so here, once again, we see that if we use the total composite of Cabell's journal of finance is about three point one eight times more impactful. Publishing there is more that much more impactful than publishing in the quarterly review of economics and finance. And down here, you can see that um, it's the, the journal of finance is the first tier, the first rank, the A star rank, and the quarterly review journal is the third rank. So you can see that there's there's the difference here, I think is reasonably similar to the difference here. And so I wanted to, to show you that um, so that way you can go back and figure out um, on Cabell's, if your journal does appear on Cabell's, then you can, uh, the two journals you're comparing, you should be able to calculate the impact difference. Feel free to rewind this video and watch it again of how I got that. But also there should be, even if you're not inside of an AACSB or business school, um, even if you're in the humanities or other social sciences or hard sciences, there should be some form of ranking system of journals. Um, I'll, I'll call this the qualitative ranking system, right? A star, A, B, C, unranked. There should be something similar to this in your own discipline. And then what you can do is you can do exactly what I did here, where you can take the qualitative ranking system, A star, A, B, C, and then you can take a quantitative ranking system from Cabell's to arrive at the total composite. That's once again, simply multiplying the citations or the site score times the alt metric score or the media mentions to get the total composite score. Then you can compare those two. You can even divide the larger one by the smaller one to see what the impact difference is as a multiple. Hopefully you found this video insightful. Again, please like and subscribe, and you can also go to my channel and watch tons of other videos that I've produced um, for budding academics such as yourself. And please put down in the comments what videos, types of videos you would like to see me do next. Thank you all so much, and I'll see you next time.